I was born in a little suburb of Bombay, India, into a hard-working, middle-class family. My father worked for Pfizer's. We had food on the table, and we were luckier than most. I moved to the Middle East at the age of 24. In one, of my, in one of my trips to India, business trips to India, I was riding with my dad, and we stopped at a traffic light when a little boy ran up to the car begging for money. I pulled out 100 rupees and gave it to him, and he ran after the car as it started to move and said thank you, and he was so grateful, and uh, his eyes lit up, and I was bursting with joy. And my dad turned around and said to me, will you miss the 100 rupees? And I thought, no. He said, well, then try giving away something you will miss. How about your beautiful jacket or your paycheck? A little drastic, I thought, for the moment, but it stayed in the back of my mind. The lesson really was, when giving is a sacrifice, it can be deeply gratifying. My name is Deborah Pandit Sawaf, and I am the CEO and founder of Tele Blanc and the Power of Words Movement for Mental Health. That lesson and many others have been the fo a guiding force in my career. I try to add purpose to everything I do. My platform is not just about aesthetic, but about making statements and sh social change. Every time I design a collection, I always question myself. How am I going to empower, impact, or give back? In business, we can do well and do good. I've always been a creative. However, my dad, like most dads, said to me that fashion was not an intellectual life skill. It was a hobby, and I had to find a real career. So I went off to study psychology, but in my spare time, I did pursue fashion. I was lucky to have the opportunity to intern with a design studio that was working with Versace. That paved the way to where I am today. I found my passion. I was lucky to intern and then work with some of the leading designers in the world. I was also fortunate to have an opportunity to move from India to the Middle East, still work with artisans in Italy, and then eventually move to the United States. I felt blessed, but in a strange way, I felt chosen. So many people would give anything to be where I was. The pressure I put on myself was tremendous. How was I going to use this gift of opportunity to make a difference? They say it starts at home. Bashar, my husband, and I, being like-minded, we agreed to teach our kids the gratification of giving, especially when it is a sacrifice. Our kids are encouraged at the age of seven to give up presents and pick a cause that they will work with hands-on. The responsibility is ours as parents to teach them the gratification from their sacrifice. A purposeful life is what we wanted to give our kids. It's what we got from our families. Over a decade ago, I launched my brand, Tele Blanc, inspired by Audrey Hepburn, a 100% Italian brand. When it's ingrained in the back of your mind, every moment presents an opportunity. It was determination and drive that took me down the path to finding my purpose. And you might think, well, what does fashion have to do with creating change? Fashion is one of the most important vehicles for change. Fashion leads culture. It's culture that creates change. Then one day in the US, working with my daughter, uh, probably nine years old at the time, she was alongside my assistant drawing a spring garden with butterflies. Butterflies are a symbol of hope. With her consent, we made a family decision. If she chose to sacrifice her birthday, we would create a collection. We called it the Flutter of Hope. And the proceeds would give back to a charity of her choice. She got to work hands-on, understand the process of sourcing, production, selling, none of which is either simple or easy. At the end of the year, when she wrote a check to St. Jude's, 
all it took was a little note from the hospital, a kind note from the hospital, that empowered her to do more. She went on at the age of 11 to work and volunteer at Mother Teresa's in Calcutta in India. That was a big moment of realization and appreciation of life's simple privileges. I know many of you are perhaps facing a choice. Do I pursue a career that provides a stable living or do I follow my passion? I do believe you don't have to choose. If you can find your purpose, you will realize that this is what your natural gifts and attributes are meant for. You will make it an integral part of your life when you decide you want to make change. For me, it was sacrifice. Giving something I will miss, not just monetary, but time, knowledge, network. I dedicate a good amount of time to entrepreneurs because I remember my struggles as an immigrant with a startup in the United States. It took the power of network of a good many people to get me off the ground, and now I want to pay it forward. A major pivot in my life was in 2022. I was asked if Talibla, my brand, would be the fashion event for the NBA All-Star Game and the Super Bowl, and give back to mental health. Post-COVID especially, looming over our heads, is yet another pandemic, one that no vaccine in the world can cure. It is a cause very close to my heart, and I felt like my life had come full circle. Here was the perfect opportunity to make an impact and create change. Mental health has been a taboo in so many communities. Post-pandemic, erasing the stigma has become my personal mission. If I did not have a career, I would not have a platform. And if I did not know my purpose, I would not be doing what I'm doing today. So I launched the movement, The Power of Words Brand, under Taliblanc, of course, a movement that brings together like-minded organizations, role models to reach out and speak out, and collaborations with artists and retailers, all in the efforts to erase the stigma around mental health. People told me I should pick one or another, fashion or mental health. There were even comments that mental health was just an American problem. Just when I started to doubt my decision, we get nominated by the Italian Fashion Chamber and the UN for the first social sustainable brand in the world. That little window of, op of opportunity convinced me that I was on the right track. We now have planned for 2023 forums, retreats, and retail collaborations. The mental health movement is on its way, but the number of suicides is still increasing. The future of our youth is at stake. Our words have power, but it is not enough for me to say that. You need to know that we are listening. Using fashion as a vehicle and through retail collaborations, we can launch collections such as The Power of Britney's Words, The Power of Tupac Shakur's Words, The Power of Words for Autism, for Cancer, for the Handicapped, The Power of Yusra Mardini's Words for Refugees and for Syria. So much help and feet and funds are needed on the ground right now in that region. This is my call to action. Mental well-being, whether we agree or not, resides in the hierarchy of all illnesses, all catastrophes, all homes, corporations, schools, and universities. All it took is passion and purpose and creative thinking to roll out this movement. Who would have ever thought that a young girl from a little suburban Bombay chasing a career other than medicine could have the opportunity to impact and change lives. There is no vision that's too ambitious and no mission that is too easy. But with perseverance and resilience, I would like to leave behind a little grain of sand to say I was on this planet. And so I challenge you, how can you use your passion to create change in the world? Remember that no deed is too small 
and giving is gratifying. Thank you. All right, we were going to be taking a question from the audience today for Deborah. We will have the microphone roving around the room. Question or comment? We have one over here. If you can take the microphone to the opposite side of the room. First of all, I just want to say thank you so much. This was an amazing talk. My question for you would be, you mentioned about the importance of words, but also the importance of listening from others. So when you started your journey or when you started your passion, did you, did you first realize that people were listening or did you have to make them listen? And if you realized that making them listen was a part of the journey, how were you able to do that? Well, when I first started, um, when I decided what I wanted to do, I went full force. I didn't think I'm an entrepreneur, I'm creative, I just move with it. Because if we wait, we're not going to ever get out of our seats and move. But when we were uh, nominated by the Italian Fashion Chamber, and uh, I, I was in Milan at the time, and I had to see all of the press, and straight away at dinner one night, they said to me, Deb, no, we're not talking about mental health. It does not exist in fashion. That's an American problem. And so I had to do interviews with each of the press, each of the magazines. And every time I sat down and two minutes or three minutes into the conversation, I could tell that I was relating to them. Everyone has faced it, everyone's dealt with it at some point in time or in their life. And we even had some press that had tears roll down their cheeks and thank me for what I was doing because I think everybody's ready to talk about it but we still keep it undercover. So people are listening and I've got major corporations that are willing to come behind and support us and it's not just fashion, it's uh, you know whether it's luxury cars or um, insurance or the Calm app or Kind Bars, everybody has a message. Thank you. 